In 1543, on his deathbed, the Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus was given a book. It was the first edition of something he'd been working on for years. In his book, Copernicus proposed that the Sun was the centre of the universe and that the Earth was actually a planet in orbit around it. It seems as if we live on a stable, unmoving platform with the stars and the heavens above us. And the sciences now say that's not true. We actually live on a small rock orbiting a large flaming gas star. The most important thing about medieval cosmology was a radical separation between what happens here on Earth, where we live, and what happens in the heavens. The Earth was seen as the world of change, of life and death. But in the heavens, where the planets move and where the stars are, everything is perfect. In 1572, Tycho Brahe observed something that completely contradicted Aristotle's cosmology. This is in November, it's in Denmark, we're quite far north and the sky was already quite dark. He looked up at the stars and lo and behold, he saw a new star. This was amazing to him. It's so amazing that he asked other people passing by whether they could also see it. He couldn't believe his eyes. Tycho Brahe surmised that what he had observed in the constellation of Cassiopeia was the birth of a star. He described it as the greatest wonder since the creation of the world. And so the question is, how could that be? Because no change ever occurred in the heavens. He knew that because he'd read Aristotle. The observations prior to Tycho are about this many pages and this many are Tycho's observations. It's just overwhelming to see the enlargement of the database which took place uh, by Tycho's work. In January 1610 Galileo made an astonishing discovery. He saw four moons orbiting Jupiter Galileo realized that there were other centers of the universe apart from the planet Earth. In 1616, Galileo was summoned by the hammer of the heretics, Cardinal Bellarmine, who'd sent Bruno to the stake. Galileo was to answer to the Inquisition. Galileo was sentenced to house arrest in his home in Florence and forced to recant everything he'd said. The legend is that after everything was done, he said, a poor Simorvi, and yet it does move. If there's one thing that everybody knows about Newton, it's that he sat under an apple tree. They don't really quite know what the apple did, but they know he sat under the apple tree. And as he told the story, he said, I was sitting in my garden, I watched an apple fall from a tree, and the thought suddenly flashed through my mind. It's the same force that pulls the apple towards the ground as makes the earth revolve around the sun. Using modern telescopes, astronomers today can still study the remains of Tycho Brahe's Stella Nova in Cassiopeia. What Tycho Brahe had observed was not the birth of a star, but on the contrary, a supernova. The fate of a burnt-out star annihilated in an explosion. Using telescopes in space, astronomers have observed other solar systems many light-years away. They've even found planets similar to Earth. The Copernican revolution teaches that things are not as they seem that the world of common sense and everyday experience is not real. It is not the same as the world the sciences describe. Mm -hmm.